Hello. So I guess uh, I guess we should start slowly because of that problem of some people having to leave early and some people having to come late. <laughs> We're going to do the, uh, the the worst thing, which is actually uh, making everyone unhappy. <laughs> so, uh, but um, but before we start, uh, can I just ask quickly? How many of you actually filled up the survey on Aperture? How many of you have seen it and uh, filled it up? So that's actually, well, I mean, half of the room, right? So, which is, uh, okay, so that's interesting. Uh, mean, meaning that uh, not everyone who has actually, uh, you know, like uh, is here has actually seen the survey. So, so you, you will see some of the survey uh, results uh, and, you know, and the, uh, uh, I think Elizabeth will be presenting the, uh, the survey results, and that'd be, that'd be interesting. Um, Maybe just a quick uh, historical word. Uh, so that that project, I mean, yeah, I think I think we could start right, yeah, formally. You will need to shift the, change the slides from All there. All right. So. Okay. So I'll change. Position as well. And again, not everyone who should be here is yet here. I think uh, Peter, for instance, is going to join us in uh, in ten minutes or so. Uh, so I try to start slowly <laughs> to get uh, <laughs> making it. So, uh, so what is Aperture and uh, and why we started that project uh, some a while back? Uh, uh, just realized the uh, kind of the gap analysis. Right? The, the gap analysis that we we did was the following: uh, uh, in a, a lot of what we produce as a research community is a, uh, our research objects that are uh, you know very important and very uh, critical for the uh, for the research but not always well recognized uh, and that uh, that aspect of uh, recognition of uh, research objects such as data sets and uh, uh, you know uh, tutorials uh, uh, um, software libraries uh, all those things uh, that recognition aspect is still i think weak uh, that's my assessment and uh, open for discussion um, so the, so the question is, and also there's also the aspect of openness and, and, and whether we actually want to uh, have uh, uh, like a rather societies, rather that companies running out the way and what we publish. I think that, that, was, a, that was also an, an aspect of that, uh, of that thing. So, um, so basically what the key, the really key uh, critical thing for Aperture is the, are the following five, five motos somehow. Like, uh, so first of all, publish more than PDF when you can publish more than PDF. And, uh, and that comes from the realization that the, if I take an article and I, I look at what's been done, uh, if, if I have to start again from just the PDF, it, and like if I haven't got some of, some of those first tools and first things done, it's going to take like ages. Uh, and it's, really, it's going to be really, really hard. So the PDF is probably the most unreusable thing, I mean, that it, it still has the ideas, which is our, you know, like, a, probably like a, the primary thing, so it's, I'm not, uh, you know, it's not, uh, but it's really, uh, it's really almost like an artifact of the, um, of the publishing of the 19th century, right? It's, it's uh, you know, you, you just, uh, you just have the paper or like, a, and if you have the paper on the web, you know, you just don't do anything with it. I mean, uh, we now can scrap the, the text, but, you know, it's, uh, it's not, it's not very reusable. Uh, so that's uh, that's one aspect. Doesn't mean that uh, a person should not be publishing PDF. Of course, it should. Uh, I think, that's, uh, but it's not only PDF. And whatever you can actually uh, enrich uh, uh, the uh, the research object, you should be re enriching the research object. Uh, so the second thing which was I was alluded uh, was alluding uh, to is the the high quality aspect. There are many platforms where you can actually post or disseminate research objects. Um, that sets or like a, you can put your your like a, your data set on Zenodo, right? So, and, uh, but but there's not that many platforms that actually review things. Uh, so and and actually put keep, put a label of high quality on on the, on those objects. And I think that's still you know very needed for like, as you know in terms of the uh, open and and, and society-based like a uh, platform. I think that's still something that is missing uh, in in many instances. Openness. Um, and that's uh, and what is open and what is not open is not. Uh, I, I don't think that's always like a, a completely um, uh, one or zero thing. Uh, clearly, um, openness in terms of, uh, of of being accessible, being accessible, and the PDF being accessible. That's something that's a clear thing. I mean, and, and many journals actually moving in that direction. Uh, I think almost every journal is moving are moving in that direction. Uh, the uh, uh, I don't know what's happening with Plan S, but I think there's, there's so much pressure uh, for the uh, 
uh, for like uh, making those uh, those PDF uh, those uh, published artifacts uh, open uh, for everyone. That's it's, it's it's really moving fast in that direction. Uh, that's my my sense. But, uh, that's, uh, but the openness can go like much much further than that. And the, for instance, uh, you know what uh, the, uh, in the review process can we can we then open the, uh, the reviews themselves or not? Uh, is that is that something that is uh, uh, desirable or not? Uh, and uh, and basically having a way for the society to actually get, give the feedback and give some some uh, uh, what what is preferable? What is the society actually wanting? What what is the community wanting uh, on on those things? I think that's that's an important uh, and that's and clearly this will be a debate and like uh, and discussions because that's there's, there are many various opinions and uh, sometimes strong opinions on those questions. So it's interesting. Uh, uh, governance. I think that's that's something really, really dear to my heart. Like it, it's um, you know the the aspect of uh, of uh, a publishing platform that is uh, uh, not run to actually make some profit, but it's actually run to make sure that the society and the community is publishing uh, the best artifacts and the, uh, the, the the best what what is needed for the research to go uh, uh, fast and, and well uh, is something that is uh, is important. So I think uh, the, uh, one of the core ideas is that uh, OHBM will be uh, the uh, uh, the parent organization that will run that. that that, that platform, uh, in terms of the governance, in terms of the financial aspects, and so on, and the um, and, and making sure that you know the, uh, I mean, the, the society is not trying to actually make uh, money, uh, like a huge profit out of those things. I think is is one of the, uh, the, the the elements as well that is uh, uh, core to the. Um, uh, and that's uh, and that's the non-profit aspect uh, that you know, like if, if the fees can actually cover the uh, the running of the operation, I think that's you know that's you know there's no there's no profit, there's no like obviously it has to yeah it will it will have to be some money to go in because you know that you can't run those things without any uh, uh, cash, but um, but that's uh, that's not a, main, a money-making machine for the society. That's that's what the, uh, the the key aspect is. I think those are the five uh, key words, like or you know. It's, Things, but uh, I'm sure that there may be some other ideas and other things that you know people uh, will want to add. So I think uh, that will be for the. Before I, before I go, I should I should say we will have like a bit more of a presentation uh, aspect. Uh, you know, in the first uh, uh, in the first uh, uh, part of the uh, of the meeting, and then and then there will be a lot of discussion. But uh, we we'll rather postpone the discussion until everyone has presented and, and give feedback on uh, where the project is and so on. And that's, uh, um, so the, uh, the initiative comes from Topic. So Topic, uh, I think Martin, you started uh, that a long time ago, and or not that long time ago, a few years ago, <laughs> um, uh, and uh, and supported uh, uh, at the moment by uh, by OHPM. It doesn't cost much at the moment because of the, there's no uh, uh, there's no huge cost associated. Um, uh, so it's not uh, it's not a uh, costly operation for the society. Uh, but it is actually in the uh, strategic investment plan of the of the society. So that's something that the society has thought. Okay, uh, having a place where uh, the community can actually publish those, uh, the, I mean, research objects that are rich research objects, and in a, in a way that is handled by the uh, by the society is uh, is something which is important for us. And that's uh, so that that is actually there are four uh, lines in the four. Uh, uh, items in the strategic plan, I and mean, I'm sure Joanne could actually recite those. I can't, <laughs> but I know that the fourth one is the is uh, the uh, is the uh, uh, is the uh, is aperture is the uh, the publishing platform. Uh, Tom, I'm sorry, we there was some confusion on the on the timing, and uh, therefore some people are starting going to start to trigger in at uh, around the 12:30. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Um, Right, so uh, so that beautiful picture was created by one of the Nicola students, and uh, with uh, the, the element of uh, uh, um, you know the you know how we measure the success and what we want, what what is the what are, what are the key elements that are you know, making sure that the, 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 uh, this is going to be a success. And to me, again, one of the key elements is not only the openness, but it's really the uh, the high quality aspect. If we uh, there are many open journals again that are doing uh, like open publishing and sometimes for uh, uh, almost no cost and so on. Uh, there are few, very few of those, very very few. I mean, almost none that uh, are actually having a, a stamp of uh, uh, of 
acknowledgement of high quality by the by the community, and that's that's really I think the, the, having like those those things together is is the uh, is the measure of success to me. There's a lot, a lot of people uh, that are thinking that uh, you know there's a little bit of a, a problem in, in trying to reproduce uh, uh, research in, at the moment, and that so that having like a bit of a, a coloration of, on reproducibility was something that we thought would be important as well. And also, I was just discussing with uh, Etienne, like he was saying, hey, uh, you know, there's a lot of trouble in terms of uh, publishing those reproducible uh, uh, reproducibility of, uh, of, uh, of research. Like if you have, if you reproduce something and you send that to Nature and Neuroscience, they, they, they are unlikely to publish it. And that's uh, it's just because they're, you know, it's, it's kind of lacking the excitement of the new result and things like that, but it's, it's, it's still such an important thing to publish. And, uh, and, and so we are a bit like, uh, uh, we have to balance that, that, that aspect, and so that, uh, um, where was I? Open source, um, yeah, and, and then there's uh, the aspect of uh, non-profit again, that I uh, think was, uh, was important. Like, uh, that, again, that's not a, a, a project to make some, uh, to make some profit uh, for the society. I'd like to thank uh, the people that have been involved to start this thing. Uh, like, uh, so there was this whole topic uh, committee that uh, just started this uh, thing a couple of years ago. Um, uh, and then we started to create, we created like a little working groups uh, uh, with uh, community engagement, uh, uh, sustainability, uh, uh, workflow, uh, what, what sort of workflow do we do? Uh, uh, also, like uh, some, some like what, what would be the first uh, set of research objects that we could publish? Uh, uh, infrastructure, which is such an important and difficult aspect. That's why uh, Tal ran away because he <laughs> is, uh, uh, but he's coming back. Uh, uh, but uh, um, is uh, uh, but you know, like uh, but uh, and, uh, I must uh, I mean I must say that you know that's at the moment that's the one we are we really like uh, uh, late and uh, with I mean that's the uh, that's the thing that is still uh, still we're still struggling to have like you know what what exact um, uh, type of infrastructure we want and one of the uh, elements that we may move on, move from you know, we don't know yet. Uh, is the um, is the fact that this this was uh, I was hoping to get um, an open source platform where, uh, for instance, the developers that are involved in the open science C could actually uh, could you know I could go in and, and put some issues and say hey you know I would I would like to see that sort of feature in Aperture and then they would go like oh that's a very good idea from the like uh, and then that would, could be implemented and maintained and the maintainability aspect uh, would you know could be uh, that, the, that the fact that you know if you have like a, a lot of developers around uh, and then you know a, a, a big open source project uh, there's there's the maintainability that is actually achieved by the distribution of work across uh, the uh, the open source uh, community so that that was the initial idea <laughs> and frankly uh, I don't know <laughs> yet if that's going to be to pan out um, uh, and that's still, that's still under discussion. The, uh, for the little story, we, we started with the, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I'll close that parenthesis and I'm sure there will be more discussion on that uh, later on, but uh, for the little story, we, we started with the uh, Collaborative Knowledge Foundation uh, publishing elements that are being reused at the moment by Indawi, by uh, eLife, by uh, like a number of platforms. Uh, we had uh, developers. We had at first the first developer who struggled with the thing because they hasn't got the React and the slash GraphQL stack in his hands. And then the second developer, who actually was really good, and that did, uh, started to do some really good things. And then left for industry because it was paid too high more, more <laughs> in industry. So all those things are you know little uh, setbacks. And um, uh, so we 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 are still investigating what is the best way forward. Um, and I, I'm sure Peter will, uh, and uh, there's uh, like uh, uh, different ideas and different possibilities. Uh, so what I, the only thing I can say is that uh, I'm pretty confident that we will have something ready for Montreal <laughs> meeting, but probably not, uh, not uh, very early on uh, for sure. And I wish, I, mean, I, I, I tried to uh, actually get something up the ground for this meeting, but, uh, but failed. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, yeah, I think that's all what I wanted to say, uh, like as an, as an introduction. Again, I'm sorry for the people who have, will be arriving a bit uh, late, uh, or I mean, not late actually, for with the uh, time. But uh, uh, now, if we could uh, go and, uh, and talk to you about the, the, the survey, uh, I think that's, uh, that was a very nice operation uh, led by Nicola and, uh, and others uh, on you know getting from the community what the community wants uh, for uh, publishing. Uh, 
Yeah. And also, I, I use the term publishing platform rather than journal because, again, uh, we would like to move away from just the like article in a, and the journal is very much associated with that PDF kind of uh, like a, or etc. So, uh, Elizabeth uh, is a uh, doctorate uh, candidate. Is that the, <laughs> the official term in uh, at McGill? Uh, see. And um, and she handled the analysis of the survey, and she will be presenting the uh, the, the, the survey to you. Um, thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, very happy to be here. I'm also very happy to hear that JB asked, um, for those folks who came in a little bit late, kind of who had actually taken the survey, and it isn't the entire room, um, because this means there are lots of interests in the community from folks who are here and folks who are not here. So whether you took the survey or not, I think this is a really kind of interesting slice on how folks in our community feel about this kind of thing. Really excited to talk about it. So I'm just going to introduce it a little bit here. The rest of the speakers will be going through it as it relates to their own areas. Um, but I'm just going to provide a little bit of context on exactly what we were asking, why we were asking it, and some of the general characteristics of the responses. OK, and I also want to say that in true open fashion, um, this whole analysis is already available on Binder. So what that means is if you go to this link, you'll see a button that says, launch binder. If you click that, it'll do a little spinny wheel for a minute, but when it loads, you'll have a whole interactive environment where you can see every single thing we did to analyze the survey results, all the results that we include in the blog posts, and all the blog posts are linked there. So you can actually go through for yourself, ask new questions, or see how we ask questions, and really work with this data yourself. So everything I'm telling you is available online, which is great, um, but also try and give you a little bit of a guided tour on, on some of the things that we have out here. All right, so really what we wanted to do is get feedback from OHPM community members on four key areas. The first was the perceived need for Aperture. So did OHBM community members feel like it would be useful to have a new publishing platform, in particular one that um, was associated with the society and could maybe potentially publish novel research objects? Um, the second area that we really wanted feedback on was preferred kinds of objects to publish. So of course we're all familiar with traditional PDFs, but there are lots of other research objects that we're generating day to day, and it would be really nice to have some of those vetted, reviewed, get recognition for the scholarship that they are. So what kind of objects are people thinking about? What kind of objects are they generating? What kind of objects would they like to see um, in, in a venue like Aperture? The third area we wanted to get feedback on was potential reviewing models. So there are lots of different ways that review could be done. So today, the majority of the system is done through single blind reviews, where the reviewer knows the identity of the authors, but the authors don't know the identity of the reviewers. Um, but there are variations on this model that we could think about. So we could do signed or unsigned reviews. Um, we could also think about doing post-publication peer review. So after the, the research object is available, how could we continue to get feedback from the community and hear about you know, the use of this object and, and if it's valuable? And the last thing um, we wanted to hear from community members on is pathways to financial sustainability. So there are quite a few ways that we could think about making Aperture a, a financially sustainable platform. Um, but it, because this is so directly tied to the society, it, we really wanted to know what are community members thinking, what would they like to see, and what do they think makes sense. So um, again, I'm not going to go through the whole survey. I really just want to provide you with some very high-level information about how we got our responses. So in December of 2018, we launched the survey and advertised on the OHBM blog, on the mailing list, and on social media, like Twitter. Um, after all of this, we received about 200 responses. So it's actually 192 members, which you'll notice is, is kind of a small slice of the community. But of those responses, 43% were early career researchers. So this is graduate students, postdocs. I think we had 1% undergraduate researchers, actually, which was great. Um, and so this really seems to be, even though it's a small slice, it's a pretty representative slice. And of this slice, 87% um, think that we should have our own publishing platform. So this seems like a really good place for Aperture to step in and to have this close relationship with the society and to host these kinds of research objects. 
And I just want to say really quickly that, again, because this is a small survey um, in terms of sample size, we really want to thank all those members who did take part. We really appreciated hearing from you about what you value and what you would like to see moving forward. But more importantly, we'd also really like to start a dialogue with the entire community. So there are a lot more of us than just 200. It would be really great to hear from everyone, hopefully in venues like this and, and moving forward, about what you would like to see in this platform um, and, and what you think would be really valuable for, for our community. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Nicola, but I just want to remind you again of this link so that you can go and explore the results yourself and check it all out. Thanks. Thank you, Elizabeth, for presenting, and I know you have to leave to the Open Science Symposium, <laughs> Open Science SIG, and uh, we'll, we'll continue with the survey results. Uh, I just want to get you used to how to interpret uh, the responses. Thank you for coming. Sorry, we had to start late. Uh, so these, these are uh, the results uh, organized by color, hopefully making it a little bit easier to read. So uh, I'll spend some time explaining what this means. Uh, first, starting with the question, what factors contribute to your decision where to publish? Um, red and blue are strongly agree and agree. Uh, violet and orange are disagree and strongly disagree. And then green is kind of neutral, neither agree nor disagree. So I think the easiest way to read this would be to take a look at the location of the green bar to see you know, how far to the right it is. And then also uh, the size of the green bar. If it's very large, that means quite a few people didn't really have a strong preference, strong opinion on the topic. And then when we take a look at what is really important, there's a couple that stand out, which is scientific theme and journal reputation, right here. But then a lot of the others are about the review standards, high review standards, um, review times, uh, review transparency. So it seems like that's very important, and that's why uh, Peter, who's on his way, will spend some time about our review workflows. And then not to be ignored, people do care about the impact factor, whether we like it or not. And uh, you know, it shows here, it's also among the most popular uh, factors, and uh, I don't think we can escape it, but uh, we have yet to discuss how exactly we'll incorporate impact factor into what Aperture <coughs> hopes to accomplish, but it goes with this high quality theme that uh, JB introduced. <coughs> So this is the count of people. We had 193, I believe, but not all of them responded to every question. So you will see that at least 175 people responded to all of these. So I hope that makes sense, both in terms of setup of what the community uh, cares to decide to publish in Aperture, but also how to read these results. And then I'll also explain the next uh, uh, question that uh, was featured in the survey. Uh, what content would you like to see in Aperture? And uh, here you will see lots of options, tutorials, simulations, communications, review articles, original empirical articles, which are kind of the standard PDF, but also uh, methods, meeting summaries, data sets, data descriptors, computational notebooks, and so on. And it's kind of tough to make a call here what is the most important. Uh, I think it makes sense that original empirical articles are still preferred by the community, and we're not giving up on those. I think that should be uh, possible to host uh, on Aperture. But then we notice that, for example, tutorials have quite a lot of interest. And this is not a conventional research object. And the community said that they would like to see more of those. Uh, methods articles, you will see also right here. Those are pretty popular. Uh, and then, you know, data descriptors, code, making it easy to reproduce code uh, and analysis. All those are on the radar of the people that responded to the survey. So my role here is really to try to propose a couple of different research objects that are already happening, and just to get people thinking about what could possibly be published by Aperture. By no means an exclusive list, but uh, some things that already exist that are looking for a home. Uh, how many of you are aware of these tutorials that the OHBM blog has been publishing, the how-tos? Okay, quite a few, that's great. Um, these take a lot of work, and what they do is they leverage our on-demand platform. So uh, these are the people that have been contributing, quite a few in the room, uh, and especially big thanks to Jeanette and Niels, who really got it off the ground as part of the communications committee. Um, and they take videos that are on the on-demand platform, and they write these wrapper review articles around them. They're not short. They're on the order of about, what, 3,000, 4,000 words, about? And uh, they will annotate the videos and say, as so-and-so said in this video, Resting state functional connectivity is uh, you know, uh, uh, important because of these issues. 
Uh, I encourage you to take a look at them uh, because these are things that are currently just blog posts. I think they could be more. And as you will see, they go through quite a lot of editorial work, so they are in a sense peer-reviewed, but Aperture would be a way of making them even more properly vetted and hopefully with some feedback from reviewers that will improve. But it's leveraging what we already have and these tutorials have tripled the amount of on-demand views that we have at the moment. So they are good for the community, maybe they could be even better. This is something that is from a partner. So the Canadian Open Neuroscience Platform is uh, dedicating some financial resources towards Aperture. And they also have this platform called Neurolibre, which is at the moment hosting Jupyter Notebooks that can be executed in the cloud via a browser using uh, BinderHub. We want to deploy BinderHub on the Compute Canada high performance uh, computing infrastructure to make this fast, but these objects already exist. And uh, the first one here is a supplement to an existing paper. It's a neuroimage paper, but because there were issues with sharing the data, uh, the authors here, and I have to credit Pierre, who is really driving this effort, Pierre Balek, uh, created simulated data and made it easy to explore the data uh, and to reproduce the figures that were in the original neuroimage paper. This is a tutorial that was built by people in my lab. Matthew Boudreau is a developer hired by the Canadian Open Neuroscience Platform. And this is a tutorial built by Elizabeth uh, and uh, lots of other colleagues, uh, which is an introduction to machine learning uh, with uh, NyLearn. Uh, without going into too much detail about what this research object is, I just want to show the layers that are possible. So this is a tutorial for uh, MRI T1 mapping. And it reads like a conventional PDF article, nothing fancy there. It is PDF compatible. But then, when you go to the second layer, you see that these figures can be dynamic and you could explore the data that are in the figures. You can also explore the phenomenon that generates the figures. For example, let's see how inversion time affects your signal, or let's see what the real-world data looks like. This is the brain, and uh, these are the T1 maps that come out of the original MR images. So there's a layer of interactivity to them. There's a layer of transparency, because you can actually see the code that generated the outputs. And uh, this is important if people just want to reproduce the findings. And then the fifth layer, layer is reproducibility. Not only can you see the code, but you can actually interact with it online. And I'm not saying that every aperture object needs to have these five layers, but it's just showing what is possible with current technology, and hopefully aperture will make use of that. So to me, that's really just a, a, a brief uh, snapshot of what is already out there. Uh, so you know, hopefully we're not starting from scratch. But we're really open to suggestions. And I would like to use this opportunity to solicit if you have an idea of a research object that you're excited about and you think it doesn't have a proper home, talk to us and we hope that we will provide the infrastructure to make it possible to publish that uh, research object. So uh, this is the uh, moment when we pass to the reviewer model, except Peter is not around yet. So maybe Michael can go. So uh, would you like to talk about the reviewer model as well, or maybe just go to sustainability first? No, I'll talk about the reviewer model. All right. So... Oh, I don't care. What do you want me to talk about? <laughs> Peter might come in. Yep. So uh, how about, I'll talk about sustainability. Yeah, talk about sustainability, and if Peter doesn't come, then uh, we'll talk about the reviewer as well. Okay. So just to disclose you that I have conflict of interest. I happen to be an editor uh, for a commercial journal. Um, and if anyone feels uncomfortable about that, then I'm, um, I'm, I'm happy to be made redundant. Um, and the former editor-in-chief is also involved in this. But the, the bottom line is that between us, I mean, um, and others in, in the room, we've edited probably 20,000 papers or so. Um, and I also got involved when I was treasurer of OHBM. Uh, so don't shoot me. I mean, I've worked with Darth Vader for several years now. <laughs> and. Um, Debbie's trying to encourage me um, to come over to be Luke Skywalker. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, um, I mean, my remit here is to try and um, meet some of the community expectations or, or, or contribute to ideas about keeping this um, uh, affordable um, and flexible according to the workflow, uh, but also sustainable because we don't really want to launch a platform encourage people to uh, contribute and then in uh, 18 months time the whole thing will be um, depleted and, and won't survive. Uh, we also, um, this was kind of born at the time that OHBM when I was on council moved towards becoming a society um, and so Aperture is seen as being 
one of these um, non-conference based activities. So key principles of Aperture, um, a brief period of launch support from OHBM financial reserves, about two years. Um, even, even PLOS, you might be interested, ran at a 20%, uh, I wouldn't call it a, um, uh, well it was a cash surplus in order to build up cash reserves. But on council we've decided um, cautiously we, we don't need to do that because OHBM is there and um, can even contribute um, to the platform for the first two years. Um, Aperture should then become cost neutral. I mean, most of the income from RHBM comes from the meeting uh, registration, and uh, so there's an ethical issue there about how much we're asking people to contribute to Aperture to come to a meeting. Um, but hopefully, these sorts of activities will build um, value of being a member for RHBM, um, and um, that will be part of um, any necessary ongoing financial support, not the meeting. But our, our goal is to be cost neutral. Um, from year to year, as Aperture is not exactly cost neutral, then RHBM acts as a financial reserve or cash buffer. But this should be, on average, cost neutral over two to three years. Okay, so if you have concerns about these, because these are quite um, big decisions, then um, this is the time to bring them up. I'll just go through... Um, that's what I've just said. Revenue. <coughs> this is um, putting aside OHBM contributions. Submission fee. And this, is, this was uh, canvassed in the survey. This could range from zero dollars up to a uh, non-zero amount which would differ between members and non-members. In, in, in remember that we're trying to incentivise people to become members as well. Um, I think it's quite contentious to have a submission fee and it can be quite difficult to, to manage. If people are not sent off for peer review, they might feel quite aggrieved to have parted with money. And uh, there certainly are some journals with um, submission fees and sometimes that's caused um, concern. But nonetheless, um, we've put that in there because if we're not publishing everything that comes into the platform, uh, that can keep down the article publication cost. The sort of median number that came out of the uh, survey was about $800 for members and $1,000 for non-members. Now, this is an aspirational number. This is not the number that we came up with after doing the business model. This is uh, the, m the, m the number that we're pursuing in developing um, a business model. So it's a bit around the um, other way. <coughs> oh, yeah, and so our HBM gets back should in, in chance we make a bit of money. Costs, the platform, well, um, you know, that could be near zero, but we're going to have to uh, pay developers to uh, program up um, open, open source platforms. Um, a journal manager, um, Ina and I know the importance of having a paid professional there watching over our shoulders and sending emails and keeping uh, caution that there's no papers that have drifted into a black, black hole. And plus we need to do plagiarism supports, um, uh, uh, reports. We need to make sure what we do at the end of the day is PubMed Central compliant. And um, we've had discussions about whether we do or don't pay for some copy editing for those more traditional PDF-like um, products. Marketing. Um, yeah, I doubt, I doubt we're going to market it, um, but we've put it in there as a, as a, as a line. <coughs> 